Hey everyone, Caddy here, and this... This here is just fucking depressing. Supermassive Games, a name in the gaming industry very well known for some great games like Until Dawn, and when they aren't brilliant, still manage to be fun, like with Hidden Agenda, for example. So I must ask... What the everlasting fuck happened here? Spoilers are right, okay. No. The Inpatient is a PSVR first person horror experience. I honestly feel weary calling it a game in the first place. And I didn't like it at all, which sucks major ass, especially after Rush of Blood, a VR arcade rail shooter that was actually fucking great fun and made by the exact same people. I'm getting ahead of myself though. The Inpatient is a prequel to the awesome Until Dawn about your character, male or female, with amnesia and stuck in a psychiatric hospital. You move the game along by talking with your cellmate, making choices and dialogue to affect your relationships and life or death situations, and try your hardest to survive a lockdown where everyone has randomly gone missing. Well, I say try to survive, but what I really mean is walk around for hours and hours until the game ends. What actually happens in the story I would discuss in detail here, but needless to say, since it's a prequel game and a really short one at that, nothing that happens in the story matters even slightly, especially since every other character here doesn't affect or change your opinions of the future events in Until Dawn. The characters are all bland, the voice acting isn't that convincing at all, you learn and discover nothing new or interesting, and everything that happens is totally inconsequential. There are occasional nice details and parts of the script that link everything together, so I wouldn't call it a rushed job, some effort was definitely put into it, but that's all you can get out of the story as far as I'm concerned. Another reason for that is because a lot of the game, especially in the first half, is set inside a nightmare world brought on by the hospital that you're in, meaning that nothing makes sense, nothing matters, and even funnier, the game itself tries to do the same things as Until Dawn with reading the player and judging them to change the experience, but in completely the wrong way. Instead of regular interviews getting more intense and unpredictable based off of everything you know about the characters and story at that point, the choices this nightmare leaves you to make reach so far into the realm of desperation that I would face palm, but I'd hit my hand on the VR headset. It's stuff like, for example, do you follow the deer or the person? What has that got to do with anything? I don't know. Or this one part where you choose between a big dog and a little dog, so I picked the big dog, purely because this had nothing to do with the story at that point of the game, so I thought I was just picking my preference. A, because I prefer big dogs to small dogs, that's just because I do, and B, since it had nothing to do with what was happening in the real world, I thought this had something to do with the nightmare itself. Like, if I picked the small dog, then if I got attacked, I couldn't be protected, or the big dog might even come after me or something, I don't know. But no, I picked the big dog, and then get told directly from the game that I lust for power. Like, what? Why are you to diagnose me, game? What's the context here? At least Until Dawn actually tells you why you're making these choices, even if it doesn't appear to link with the story at that moment. And the choices in the real world don't fare much better. Your conversations do definitely affect how the story progresses, which is more than what most games can say like this, but when you do things like clearly pick up a letter and read it in front of somebody, only to have that same character panic a few minutes later because he thought you might have seen the notes and you can get away with lying if you say you didn't, or find a tasty sandwich and try your damnedest to eat it but just can't and then having another character calling you out for not respecting the meal she's giving you, you get completely sucked out of the extremely realistic world created through the VR. The other interactions, especially at the start of the game, leave basically no choice because you're asked multiple times to choose between two things that obviously have only one answer at that point of the game. If you've just started playing the game like me and you're introduced to the fact that you're in a mental hospital, being interviewed and know nothing else, why the fuck would you bother lying? What's the point in lying when you don't know what you're even lying about? Everyone here has tied you down into a dark room so there's no gain or reason to talk bollocks, it can't help you at this point, it can't tip the scales in your favour, and more importantly, you don't know anything yet so you can't make a choice even if you wanted to. And why, after only having a few conversations with one character, are you left with dialogue trees that in order for you to make the best choice with, you'd need to know way more about the character than what the game tells you up to that point. Until Dawn and even Hidden Agenda let you be an outside observer to every event, you're the god making the choices on behalf of everyone. And that's the biggest difference and why the choices work so well in those games and fail miserably here. Even at the starts of those games, you get given air to breathe and time to judge people based on how they behave, look, interact with other people, and you can influence everything that's going on. It's not just about you as a single person talking with a few other people. So the choices you do make feel like actual hard decisions, especially in last minute tense situations. In the inpatient though, you're a person, they're another person. That's it. And the game thinks you're in a decent enough position to say within the first 45 minutes if they should drop dead or not. Like, 
What? I'm sick of ranting for a second though, so please let me just say that visually, in true supermassive style, the game does look fantastic. The lighting is masterful and eerily realistic, which is twice as impressive with the lower res of the VR, and the character models along with facial animations look great enough to increase the atmosphere and make you feel like you are there. I was honestly a little bit nervous and uneasy wandering around because of the visuals, but only a little bit. And unfortunately, if it weren't in VR, it wouldn't be anywhere near as cool, which is kind of an issue, I suppose. Another issue is that much like Layers of Fear, despite the odd choice in dialogue to make, this game is a haunted house simulator. And at least with Layers of Fear, despite me not liking the game too much, I can at least say it had actual puzzles to solve, and very creative spooky moments to make it worth a look if it were really cheap on a sale. But here, there is so little actual interaction and barely any reason for it to be a game at all that you don't have to feel scared at all even once. Nothing hurts you, there's no puzzle solving at all, and once you quickly realise that, what the fuck is there to be scared of? I was uneasy and caught off guard by a few jumps, but that's it. There's nothing here nearly as creative or fucked up as the stuff that happens in Layers of Fear just as an example, and I wasn't engaged because there is no game here. You just turn the pages of your own little story every so often, listen to rambling expository conversations, watch things cut to black whenever you go to bed or just walk forward, never get touched by anything, and repeat until the end. I was getting impatient with the impatient. Even when something really cool happens, like having a Wendigo attack you, and so needing to stand still becomes a topic of discussion, don't get your hopes up too much, you're still safe, and nothing fucking happens. Even my girlfriend's youngest kid Amy at 8 years old was happily watching the entire pathetic 3-4 to four hour runtime with absolutely no issues, no nightmares, and actively laughed multiple times and said it was boring from how tame it was. Yes, this ultra gritty, mature first person horror game rate 18 plus was okay for our children. That just goes to show you how weird the whole thing feels. This wouldn't be too bad, but the little scares there are in the game are so predictable it was almost painful, and when they weren't being predictable, they were anticlimactic as hell. Loud growling noises leading you to a room of eyes staring at you, then it cuts to black. Crashes and smashes all around you, then it cuts to black. Whispers in your ear and creepy imagery that might have something jump out of you, but then they don't. And all this stuff makes the whole process even more boring than it already is. It couldn't even get the simplest fucking controls right. The game, believe it or not, isn't built like any other first person game I've played in a long time, and the comparison to the last VR game I played, Doom VFR, is staggering. Strafing and walking backwards, I swear to god, hasn't been programmed properly, leaving your character floating for a few feet before grinding to a halt. So all you can really do effectively is walk forward unbearably slowly and change the direction of your forward walking, which led to so many moments of me getting stuck on the corners of walls, stroking doors over and over again, unable to step back or step around the doorframe properly, and so needing to walk back, turn around, and aim myself as dead centre as possible. Then amazingly, this gets even mixed in with ridiculously wonky motion controls for pressing buttons, opening doors, and using your torch. Sometimes it works totally perfectly and follows your hand so well that you can even turn your entire arm inside out and become the thing. And other times, the torch would constantly decalibrate from the way I was comfortably holding the controller, ending with me practically holding the controller on its side while still trying to use the analog sticks. I would get glued onto the door handles, and luckily this was all saved by the hilarity I experienced with the hardest fucking sandwich I've ever seen. By the way, the only reason the game lasted me 3-4 to four hours is because there's no sprinting, and 90% of the game is painfully slow and boring walking with absolutely nothing happening. I mean, if you're looking for a VR experience that makes you feel like a helpless prisoner, this does it well enough, I suppose. It's claustrophobic and does make you feel like a prisoner, which is what it's trying to do, but that restrictiveness bleeds way too much into the actual gameplay story and control, so the potential for something great is just left as a bloody puddle on the floor. And that's the word, potential, that kills me more than anything here. For such a a great and consistent team that have shown it can make original, creative, fun, and occasionally fucked up and freaky games even in VR, the inpatient couldn't feel more of a step back even if it tried. And how did my story end? Well, after three to four hours of sprintless walking that felt like trudging through mud, the game just stops. I'm not even joking. I escaped the hospital via a cable car, cut to black, then I stood up and shone my torch outside the window for about 20 seconds and then the credits rolled. It really ended that abruptly. What the fuck happened here? Oh yeah, it also ends with this random fucking piece of shit scene that teases you with a scare. It's so simple, it's so easy! before not doing anything at all, cuts to black like it always does with every other scare, and just ends. Fuck this game. The only thing that saves it is that it does look seriously fantastic, and can make you feel uncomfortable with the insanely effective VR effects. Plus, I guess it does do what it advertises, lets you choose your own adventure. 
It's just a shame that the adventure is so twatting boring. Also, there's a character in this called Gordon Bennett. You know, what some British people say when they're shocked. Come the fuck on. I give this game a 2 out of 10. It's terrible. If it's your birthday today while watching this video, happy fucking birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Aye, 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 aye. Thank you so much for watching this video on The Inpatient, everybody. I'm so sorry that it was so terrible. I wasn't expecting it to be that bad, but there you go. One of the worst games I've played so far this year. Hopefully it gets a little bit better from here. Special thanks to all the people on screen right now who have supported this show via Patreon, and special, special, special thanks to all the top tier supporters that you can find out how to do in the description below, but no one's holding a gun to your head. It's completely optional if you choose to do so. Omama2, Basil, Patrick Ferguson, Andy Ellis, Robert Alamsha, I Have a Portal Gun, Gamer Man, Chris Ingersoll, Andy Herrera, Exopaz, Kyle Way, Thomas Olson, Mills Kahai, Alicia Knightley, Super Spyro Fan 2010, Daniel Leon, Jane Ives, Mitchell Reed, A.D. Thornton Smith, Oblivion Rising, Noxious, Ellen Ripley, Kirsten B., QB, Nathan Young, and Nicole Ganara. Thank you so much, every single one of you.